Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This is going to be a general update on what I'm doing and where I'm at with some stuff. Um, I've not, I am working on models, but there's maybe not a huge amount. I'll show you just what I have been doing, but I haven't made a huge amount of progress really uh, since I finished the Challenger 2. Now when I finished that, I dug out my Dragon 1350 scale USSP cannon and thought well, I'll do something different, I'll give this ship a go and there's nothing wrong with the quality of the kit but some of the parts are just stupidly small and it's got photo etch with it and everything and I mean, I'll, I'll try and show you I, mean, I don't even know really whether this, let me just try try this this is going to focus, I mean you can see that size of that part there these uh, shields, I suppose, weather shields were preformed, so I didn't have to roll those. But on the little stands inside, there must be some kind of navigation instruments or something or other. There's two set, two bits of photo etch on each on each one, and I ended up only using using one. But you were supposed to glue two of these tiny parts of photo etch together, and both needed bent and shit. And it's just it's just impossible. So with that, and then one of the slightly lower decks of the, the forward structure, you know, these anti-aircraft guns. Let's see, yeah, it's focus. Is that in focus? Don't think so. Anyway, the the shoulder braces are photo etched and need bent, and then also the gun sight on top is photo etched and also had was flat, and you needed to to uh, the the circular crosshair section needed to be bent to, to so that it was in the correct orientation and um, yeah I was just kind of getting a little bit I wasn't getting wound up with it I was just finding it difficult the tweezers I've got although their needle nose are not that good if you pick bits up they have a habit of sending things pinging across the floor and those bits of photo edge are just so small you're never ever going to find them again and I didn't really want to risk losing too many of the parts. Um, so I've, I've basically shelved it for now. I built up some parts of it and I've, I've shelved it for now. So it's a shame because I would quite like to have it built. But it's something that I need to to wait to do, I think. I could do with getting one of those helping hands. The kind of vice thing you stick on your, the edge of your desk and it's got some arms with crocodile clips in them and some of them you can get with magnifiers and things on them so I think I could do with something like that to be able to hold some of these parts while I glue them in place meaning that I can have the glue and I can have the the part I'm trying to put on without also trying to hold you know in this case the, the kind of bridge or whatever it is so as we shelved for now uh, in the meantime what I did do was briefly got push my wrist uh, I briefly got this out of the stash, the Academy King Tiger, and very briefly, let's see if we can get this open. And very briefly started to to put some part. For some reason, this build starts with the with the turret rather than the ring gear and stuff, which is a little bit odd. So I, I stuck with various parts on the inside of the turret and started to build up the gun um, it's got, it was going well but again I've, I've shelved that but only because I, I kind of got this out just as something to do but I shelved that only because the kit I was really waiting for arrived uh, okay, so you can see that. Uh, which is the Dragon Sexton 25 pounder. Uh, for some reason, this box doesn't seem to have had any corners on it, gluing back together on it. But anyway, I had to order that from Korea to get that here. And this is for my ISM D Day group build. So, this is my entry. I'll just show you a few brief bits of it. I've not got much done. I've started on the the bogies. All six bogies are made up. 
Christ, rockets. Um, <clears throat> this kit is technically incorrect, if you like, because the majority of sections, because they were based on the Ram tank chassis, and this is getting into a little bit of maybe river counter territory, but however, you know, if it's a case of it doesn't actually represent the real thing, and uh, then, you know, it's not a river counter thing, it's just wrong. In the end, it'll look like a sexton, it's dimension wise quite good. What you see here is a 13 tooth drive sprocket, as was common on, well, it was on the, the Priest, but also the M10, the M4, all had 13 tooth drive sprockets. Now, for some reason, based on the tracks that they generally had, Sexton's, because they were built in Canada by the Canadians, funnily enough, they generally had what they referred to as can Canadian dry pin tracks. And I believe that they were uh, quite, a, quite a significantly different type of track to your standard M4 track. And so they required 17 tooth dry sprockets, which looked quite different. And the majority of Sexton's had these. However, this kit doesn't have you know, those, those style of drive sprockets, nor does it come with those style of tracks. It comes with, I think, what, the T51 tracks, the ones with the the chevron grips on each track link. However, uh, looking around on, online, it seems that there was actually quite a number of sextons that had had 13-tooth um, drive sprockets and, you know, more Sherman-style tracks. Whether these were things that were done in the field, you know, when the tracks wore out, they were easier to replace with Sherman tracks. I feel sure that probably would have been easier. There probably would have been more, more of those around, uh, and that's how these ones came about. I don't know, but I have found pictures online of Sexton's with 13 tooth drive sprockets and these style of tracks, and therefore that's what I'm going with. Is the long and short of it. Uh, I also have the, it comes with an interior, so I've started to get that all built up, the transmission housing on, it's got some really nice, you might not see it, it's got some really nice cast texture on it. These little plates here had to be installed for mounting the, the bogies, um, the fit kind of leaves a little bit to be desired on that. Everything else has been fine so far, but on those bits were a bit funny. But I was aware of that, I read a review online that said that, so. Um, so I just whacked a bit of filler around them and sanded them smooth. In the end, when the bogies are on, you can't see it anyway, because there's a plate on the bogie here, and that covers them up entirely, so it actually doesn't matter. So that's where I'm at with that. Next step on that is to be working on the rear, on the rear hull, the rear plate, sorry. So that's the next step for that build. So working on that, um, F15, I don't know, is too big for the camera, uh, is gathering dust. The main build is more or less done. I've still got to just finish smoothing off the seam where the cockpit joins on and then get the other intake installed. It's here built up ready to go. The burner cans are done, just waiting to be installed. I'll put them in lit last, so I don't have to bother masking them. Uh, weapon stations are all all on, I think now, if I remember rightly. All the little mounting points are on. So actually, this has just got a few more details on the exterior to be put on. A couple of uh, various antenna vanes and, and some little details. And then that's pretty much ready for paint, so, which is good. Um, I have already painted up, or at least started painting. I have to excuse the dust on these; they've been sitting around for a while. The drop tanks are painted, and various bombs and missiles, but they still need old decals and everything on them. So, so that's where the builds are at. How long have I been chatting for? Nine minutes, right? Let's try and get through this next bit and keep this for a relatively shorter video. Okay, so this bit is just going to be a couple of quick reviews of some kits I bought. I mean, I've got some other stuff, but they, they could probably do with their own review. Um, so, I mean, I got a, a Hobby Boss German Leopard 2. I'll review that kit sometime. Uh, so. That's to add to my MBT and SPG collection to go alongside the PZH2000. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but I got an Academy K9 
which is good. So I've got the Canon Thunder. I suppose, I suppose at some point I should then get the Academy K1A1 to go with that as well. Um, I've got the Dana and the Stash, which I've done a review of. It didn't go up actually because for some reason the video upload failed, but I do have a review or I'll do another review of the Hobby Boss Dana. I don't know if I'll bother getting an MBT to go with that because the Czechs use their uh, self modified version of the T72 or the T80, I think, um, which I think you can get a conversion kit for, but I don't know how easily readily available it is, so it might be quite expensive, so I might just leave that. Uh, I've got the T90 in a box waiting to be built to go alongside the T90, the Type 99, a uh, Type 99, a uh, Type 90, sorry, not a T90, Type 90, the Japanese one. I do have the Tamiya Paladin. Um, however, I have I'm getting rid of that because I've had the I've had the opportunity to to basically part exchange the Tamiya Paladin against an AFV Club one, meaning that I can get the AFV Club one for about eighteen pound, brand new, which is a much better kit. So ultimately, I'll still have paid for it because I paid because I bought the Tamiya one in the first place. But um, I'll end up with a much better kit. Uh, it was the one I really did want, but was under the impression it was out of production and have since been ha had the opportunity to to get one. So, so I'll be getting rid of that, but I will be replacing it with the AV Club one. Now, the most exciting thing about recently is the new Meng M two A three Bradley. Now I'm not going to do a review of it because there's already several reviews online of that of that kit, including Paul from my SM who did one. So I'm not going to bother reviewing it. But um, if you want to have a look at what that kit's like, go and look at Paul's review. It's on the ISM channel. That kit is awesome. It's just so awesome. It's unreal. Um, you know, and it's going to be something that I think uh, there's going to be a whole bunch of us on ISM probably build it together later on in the year. It just just looks fantastic. So anyway, I kind of have an idea that this that kit deserves, understandably so, deserves to have um, deserves to be on a diorama of some kind. So first thing I did was I went back to Meng and bought um, their equipment for US modern vehicles. Now this is I think mainly designed to go with their pickup kit, but it has a couple of US weapons in it. US style jerry cans and cooler boxes. Now these cooler boxes seem to be quite a common feature on a lot of modern American vehicles. If you look at pictures of their vehicles from Iraq and Afghanistan, they've often got these brightly coloured cooler boxes on them. So I thought that would look quite cool on the back, on the tank, and also in the back of the crew compartment. Same with the weapons. I didn't even realise because I didn't even see the box until it was open. It comes with some stuff. So let's just see on the back. You get uh, basically this is your instructions and your paint guide. Vallejo callouts, which is quite good. That's what I use. Um, so you get a Barrett sniper rifle. You get an M240. You get a couple of spare tires. Obviously, they're going to be no use for me. Um, three styles of cooler box. Uh, an ammo can. Two types of three types of plastic can, and uh, a fuel and water jerry cans. Now, if I remember rightly, and we'll see in a second, basically you get all of this twice. So all these parts come in one sprue, and you get two sprues. If I remember rightly. So a single bag, two sprues. Yeah, so each sprue contains your coolers, your ammo cans, your various other plastic cans, which are actually molded as one piece. The jerry cans are split in two. But the smaller plastic cans, don't know if you'll see that, are actually molded as one piece, which is nice. Your wheel hub rubber tires for the wheels, that's quite cool, and there doesn't appear to be a seam line down the middle anyway. A little bit of flash, yeah, a little bit of excess rubber, but hopefully the rubber feels quite solid, so it might cut off quite easily. Really nice details on the 240 and the M82. Unfortunately, the barrel on one of the M82s is a little bit bent, but the other one seems to be nice and straight. Um, so yeah, quite a nice little set, and um, should build up with some nice. Just little things like that can really add to model I find, you know, I find so. So that's that. Now then, I also decided to get some infantry to go with it, and I thought. A scene similar to what's on the box here, 
patrolling down the street, these guys patrolling in front of the, the Bradley, some crew figures out the top of the Bradley would probably look quite cool. So this is Master Box's Modern US Infantry Min Cordon and Search set. So just the one sprue with one, two, three, four figures on it. Five if you include the dog. Uh, Molded in grey. Nice. A little bit of flash here and there, but figures seem to uh, kind of seems to be a standard with figures. Uh, it doesn't really detract from the quality. A uh, little scrape of a craft, a little scrape of your knife gets rid of that. Quite a lot of extra equipment. If uh, their their molly vests are all um, bare, so you get to stick, so you can kind of configure them how you like. Um, you get a little shotgun. Uh, so there's a number of weapons you can choose: a shotgun, an M4, uh, an M249. Uh, what else have we got here? Another M4 uh, sniper rifle and an M4 with a 203 launcher. Um, two, three, three, four, four, Six weapons for four guys, which is quite cool. So, um, and the dog. So one's a dog handler. Dog looks pretty cool. The only thing is I noticed that there's no kind of leash for the dog, if you like. There's no, but that's fine. I mean, you can mold that out, make that out a bit of to me a tape or something. So they look quite nice. They should paint up well. Um, the weapons are quite cool. I quite like them. They're quite good. So that's the plan for that. Although I think now I am actually going to have to get, uh, and then on the back you've got your. Color call outs and stuff, Vallejo and Life Color, although the Vallejo is spelt wrong, which is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> the dog is kind of cool actually. Although I don't quite get why this guy's kind of shouting, he looks a bit, nobody else seems to be in that kind of pose, that looks a little bit funny really. And then the artwork is not, so. Um, I was going to use the crew that comes with the Tamiya Paladin to stick in the hatches of the turret on the Bradley but obviously if I'm getting rid of that kit I can't do that so I may have to go back and I may go and buy Trumpeter's US Infantryman and Vehicle Crew set which I was going to, which I was going to originally anyway so I might get that um, for the crew but also give me a few more infantry figures to, to stick around the diorama if it, if it, without making it maybe look busy so Anyway, that'll do for now. Uh, that's a general update on the models I'm working on. The, the Sexton, effectively the F-15, although I've not done any work on it recently. And, um, you know, the, the purchases recently. I have got a whole load of ammo stuff coming from MIG. I was able to get some stuff for a good for a good price. So I've got a couple of the weathering sets and things coming, and, and one of their paint sets coming, which will be quite useful. What else have I got? I've got, uh, oh, I've got a Dragon MLRS, MLRS as well, actually. Um, I've got that from Tim at Value Kits. It's a 40 quid kit, got it for 22 posted. It's second hand, it's not a brand new kit. It's, it's, it's not started, but it's it's a, it's a used kit, effectively. Um, so that'll be getting built for the SPG collection. <laughs> Although it's not a gun or a howitzer, it's still self-propelled artillery. Um, I also have Trumpeter's 2S19 MSTAS, the Russian thing coming uh, from Tim as well. Uh, I also heard recently that Meng are releasing a PZH2000. Um, so I might be getting my name down for one of them when it's released. Mm. I've already got one, but I've got the I've got the Revell one, which well, it was a, the only kit available. It wasn't the best kit in the world. It was plastic was thick, it was chunky. There were it was just I don't know. A lot of the details seemed very vague. Once painted up and stuff, it looked quite good, and I'm quite pleased with how it looks. But you know, one of them from Meng, supposedly got clipped together tracks, full interior. It's basically going to be a bit like the Bradley, I think, in terms of quality, but just on a and, and PZH2000s are big, you know. They're, 
it's going to be a nice kit. So I'm looking forward to potentially getting my mitts on one of them sometime in the future. Although I don't know how I'd do it because I've already done a German one in NATO Tri-Zone, so I may do, may do a Greek one. Their NATO scheme is a little bit different, slightly different shade, and it's got some, some pale colours in it. Or um, I might do something a bit different with it, but although I've got, we'd have two in the stash, I think uh, uh, two, in, two in the collection, and I really only wanted one of each. If I do it from a different nation, then that's fine. If I can do it in a slightly different colour scheme. So. Alright, that'll do for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you're not bored. Sorry that a lot of it isn't just me talking and you staying at a green mat, but um, maybe someday in the future uh, I'll get a video up where I've got um, some actual models to show you. Alright, thanks for now and I'll see you later guys. Bye.